it doesn't take all that long to really stop for that moment and think before we react of what is the best choice for the individual for you and that's taking responsibility instead of saying well that person said something mean and that keeps that whole negative ball going forward and that's not what we're here about you know yes, we, and I, I agree with you a hundred percent and to me this is the most exciting thing in the world because I am passionately wanting my own soul to be free and I know from experience when you begin to do things in a different way in terms of not going for the fear or in terms of transforming anger with compassion or listening to intuition about a better way to react that creates more light and if you're open to your intuition you can feel that energy shifting in your body and it is the most beautiful thing in the world because you get more light in your body and then you exude more light and that this is what is most important to me is the creation of light in ourselves and with relationships and in the world and you can feel it so it's not drudgery it's not you know just hard work it's a creation of something very beautiful in yourself you know if you feel like you want to go towards this path of freedom if not i mean I, i'm a psychiatrist i work with many people over the years i know what a prison they live in in their mind oh yes and i know what a prison i get stuck in in my mind too but i the difference is is that i am passionately um devoted to getting out of that prison because i hate it you know it's a miserable place to be and emotional freedom offers tools to get out of that prison and even simple things like in one chapter i talk about transforming frustration with patients i really love patients it's a extremely spiritual act and I suggest that people go to the longest most irritating line they could find like in the market or the bank or the DMV and stand in it but do it in a different way now do it in a way where you let people in front of you you know which is a major revelation to them just do that once and see how people react they can't even believe it <laughs> that's true and stay positive and be cheerful and don't be snippy and angry and pushy when the cat poor cashier drops the carton of milk and it holds the line up you know do it in a different way just in that microcosm of your personal life in the most ordinary of circumstances, these are my sacred stomping grounds, you know, the lines in the market, the traffic, you know, all of that. These are sacred ways for you to begin to transform energy and emotional energy. And it's to me, you know, it is just the most exciting thing in the world. Absolutely. All right, everyone, welcome back. And you are listening to Journeys with Rebecca. And we are here with Dr. Judith Orloff. We're talking about her newest book called Emotional Freedom, Liberate Yourself from Negative Emotions and Transform Your Life. Welcome back, Dr. Judith. This is oh, great. This is really fabulous to have you here. You know, a couple things that we mentioned in the last segment that I, I would like for you to touch on is um, about being addicted to fear and worry, but also we want to touch on what is your emotional type. I think people maybe, that might be a good place for us to start at so that they would kind of understand and identify themselves. Yeah, so chapter four of emotional freedom is, is uh, what is your emotional type? And I go through four types, and it's important to know your type so you know the pluses and minuses so that you can really work on uh, to optimize the pluses and heal the minuses because then you know where you're coming from. Um, and you can take charge of your emotions. And so the four types I talk about are, the first one is the intellectual, and this is somebody who, you know, is mainly stuck in their head and comes from their head. The second type is the emotional empath, which is the energy sponge, somebody who's very sensitive and absorbs the energy of others, but can be exhausted and thrown off by it. The third type is the gusher, and this is somebody who just gushes every feeling they ever had out to people, uh, at risking giving too much information to others. Um, and then the fourth type is the rock, and that's somebody who is steady and strong, but sometimes suppresses their emotion and tends to lack passion and be a little boring. So um, the, in each uh, emotional type in the book, I go through different pluses and minuses. Now, the emotional empath has a particular interest for me because I am one. Right. Since I've been a little girl, I, I, I went into shopping malls and crowded places, and I would go in feeling fine and walk out exhausted yep. or with some ache or pain I didn't have before or yep. anxious or depressed, and I never knew what was going on. And I went to my mother, who was a doctor, and she said, oh, no, dear, you just don't have a thick enough skin. No, oh. which shut me down totally and it was well meaning the parents of that era would always say sure. stuff like that but it's not what you say to somebody i didn't realize that my emotional type was an emotional empath and that i was absorbing all that intense energy in crowded places mm -hmm. because when you go to shopping malls everyone has an energy field and all those energy fields interact and become very intense and so an empath walking into that energy field can get really thrown off center and uh, there's a quiz in the book on page 108 whether how do you know if you're an intuitive empath emotional empath and some of the questions you can ask yourself is, have I been labeled as too sensitive or emotional? If a friend is distraught, do I start feeling it too? Are my feelings easily hurt? Am I emotionally drained by crowds and require time alone to revive myself? That's a big one. Do my nerves get frayed by noise, smell, or excessive talking? That's a big one. I can well, understand. that's a huge one for me, even now. <laughs> yeah, when people talk in my face, oh my God. I mean, then I have to really center myself and use all kinds of boundary settings. Yes. Know, and then do I prefer to take my own car places so I can leave when I please? That's a sign of an em emotional empath. I always take my car places because I don't like staying in any situation. Even if I love the people more than three hours, that's my max. And then I get 
ready to go home, <laughs> whatever I'm doing. So I know how to take my car places. And this is another big one. Am I afraid of becoming engulfed by intimate relationships? Because I have a lot of patients and friends who are emotional empaths, and they're always saying, why haven't I found my soulmate? Why aren't I in a relationship? And then when you really talk to them, there's a fear that if they get involved with somebody and have to live in the same space all the time, that they're going to be engulfed. And so with an emotional empath, you really need to talk about your square footage needs you know, with a relationship and know you don't have to be on top of everyone you know, all the time, where you can have your own space where you can go. You can live in separate apartments. You can, you know, when I travel, even if I'm madly in love with somebody, I absolutely need my own bathroom, and I like to have adjoining rooms so I can get away. Then I know I'll be happy. If I'm constantly you know, in the same space with somebody, if I'm an empath, it's very difficult for me. And so I found to get successful relationships, you need to have these creative conversations with your mate. And so all these tips are in this chapter of the book, and I think it makes a huge difference for people. Well, I'm glad you kind of brought some of that up because there's a lot of people out there that, just like you said, you need your own bathroom, you need an adjoining room, you need your own square footage. And um, there are many, many couples out there that, you know, they live together um, and they get very, very irritated. And it's because, you know, if, if, you would, if they haven't had the proper or the appropriate conversation or they don't understand what they're about, then the other mate or partner's not going to understand why they need their space and they're thinking it's something that they've done or that they don't care about them anymore. So you have just really opened up a lot of people's eyes with that particular information that you have just shared. I mean, a ton of information, and I appreciate that. That is awesome stuff. Oh, I have seen it really transform relationships because half the time, empaths don't know what to ask for because they don't realize the dynamics of what's going on in themselves. And once they realize, then they have to realize it's okay to have these loving conversations with a mate. And those who are, don't have a mate and who are dating, you know, always in the beginning, you know, kind of put out that, you know, you're a sensitive person to see what the reaction is on the other person, on the other side. And if the person says, oh, you know, you're overly sensitive, something like that in the beginning. Run. Do not, yeah, do not <laughs> get involved with that. Just run. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> because I've seen many of my patients, some of my patients have been in marriages where one member of the couple doesn't respect this and the other. And so the empath ends up being sick all the time, depressed or anxious, and it's a miserable life. It sure is. Yeah. And there's so many people that fall into that category, they just haven't identified it. And I think that you have really, really um, opened up a lot of people today, and I, I so appreciate that. I do. Oh, you're welcome. Um, let's talk a little bit, if we can, let's move a little bit to, um, and, and I run across this a lot in the lines of work that I do, uh, people that are addicted to fear and worry. I think that's uh, a lot of people who are addicted to fear and worry, and on, on an intuitive level, the reason that is, is that fear has such a strong energetic charge. You know, for instance, if you're going down the freeway and you see a car accident, your attention is going to go to that. Your attention isn't naturally going to go to the happy family in the car driving by you. All right, so it's just the nature of fear that it, it has a louder, intuitive, energetic signal. And you need to know that, and it, it's very seductive. So it requires breathing, centering, and saying no to it. Um, so you just don't instinctually get pulled into its vortex. And you can be pulled into its vortex simply by watching the news these days. Oh. You know, if you just listen, if you, let's say you have a newspaper in the morning, you have the TV in the afternoon, or you watch it at night, whatever, it's a constant infusion of the fearful energy. And if you don't know how to say no to it or combat it or shift out of it, then you just, it's like an addiction where you just move towards it. But the thing with fear, and everybody needs to know this, is that you fuel it by giving it energy. And the more energy you put into it, the more attention you pay to it, the larger it grows. But if you can say, yes, there are these very real problems in our world today, and yes, they are scary. However, I am going to try and be in the moment, not catastrophize about the future, listen to my intuition, do what I can to better my situation just for today, and focus on that instead of going into the mouth of the, you know, the monster, then that's very different. And it, it takes practice, does take practice, because most people just, you know, go into fear. They feel, they see fear, they're attracted to it, they go into it, they're lost. That's what happens. But I see our spiritual challenge as a globe, you know, and as, as individuals, is to say, no, this is not what I'm going to be doing. And I believe, in a larger sense, that we're given things in order for our souls to grow. That's the basis of, of my book. You know, that's the premise. I mean, they can be very difficult things to grow, but the point of being on Earth is for our souls to grow, our spiritual development. It's, and we're given things such as really stressful times, and we can use that crisis as opportunity. I really believe that. And I know there are people out there who have lost their jobs and don't have money or are panicking, and those are very real fears. But I know that even in the, the midst of that, the way to turn that around, to help turn it around, is your own attitude towards it and taking positive steps in the right direction and also when we're going through things. I mean, it could be you know, fear of, of not having money or fear of foreclosure or the loss of a loved one. Whatever you know, we're going through, even during those times, to be of service to others and to be able to transform you know, what we're going through to help others. You know, that helps us heal. And it, it seems like, well, I'm not in the mood. I have my plate full with all these things to worry about. 
And it's true, you know, but it's not true on an energetic level.